Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for yet another, I'm gonna quick and try to get this up right away type video instead of making you wait a month. Partly because I got a request and also because I'm seeing all the crazy panic buying going on with just toilet paper. It's weird to me that people are not stocking up on food they're stocking up on toilet paper. It's gotten so bad that even in our small remote town, uh, the next town over from us that is over an hour away, uh, even though it, the people here in our town weren't doing the panic buying, the people in the big town are now driving all the way over to here to take all the toilet paper from our one grocery store, which is insane. Uh, it doesn't affect us in any way because we're naturally prepared all the way around for such things. But um, I know people locally that are in, just in need of toilet paper because, well, they have big families and they go through it quick and now they're having a hard time finding it thanks to this kind of panic. So with all this going on, um, I know I don't think it's going to last forever. You know, they're going, everything's going to be restocked eventually. It's just hard to say how long all this is going to go on. So I thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and shoot a video on some real life options that you can do. I mean, people lived for centuries without toilet paper. That toilet paper was only a luxury item. So I'm going to show you what I do here and some options that you can use for yourself. So yes i use cloth wipes but so far i have only used them for urinating i don't use them for anything else because i have the luxury of toilet paper and i just haven't wanted to mess with it no pun intended however i am not too squeamish to go ahead and use it for all jobs because i look at it this way i did cloth diapers with my babies i did cloth feminine napkins with myself I can handle some cloth wipes. Again, I still use the toilet paper and keep it on hand for the sake of guests and people who just couldn't handle the idea. And, you know, for the sake of ease and just a little bit less laundry and things to worry about. Uh, and besides, when you're using it for the bigger job, you know, I think it does require just a little bit more care, but it's really not that hard. So let me show you what I have. These two baskets, one of it sits in each of one of my bathrooms. So, you know, they're kind of color coordinated to match the bathrooms. And so, yes, I hand crocheted these baskets myself. I do have a video on, on if you're interested, how to make your own little crocheted basket that I will link to down below if I don't forget. So my wipes, and keep in mind, I've been using the same ones for years and years. So I want to I wanna say before I forget, this is a totally no-sew method. Anybody can do this. You do not have to have fancy sewing skills. Because personally, I'm not into spending my time sewing that I need for making skirts and other things that, you know, helps earn us an income uh, when I can just rip piece, rip out squares. So this is the size that I use right now, just for the, just for the, the simple job, the easy job. So you can see these here, they're just small. I don't have, they're not all exactly the same size and shape. I just ripped them out and didn't concern myself with them. Um, and then here's, I've got some gray and brown ones that go in the bathroom. That's all in gray, brown, and green. And so that's what I use for that. Now, if it comes down to me needing to, uh, let's say uh, we don't have any access to toilet paper, I don't think we're ever gonna be to that point for us personally, um, then what I would do is I would start making bigger pieces for the bigger jobs. So what I have here is just a chunk I ripped out of some old, an old flannel sheet that was my son's that he donated back to me because he doesn't need it anymore, but these are, these have been well used, these sheets. And so what I would do is I would take this fabric and I would cut it in the same size, the same width as I do for the squares I use on my skirts. So this will stick here, even though I have lots of rulers. Patrick made this exactly 10 inches, so I can just use this when I'm cutting out skirts. And I've actually already pre-cut or pre-ripped this one to be 20 inches wide, so I can just demonstrate how easy this is. So all I gotta do is lay this there. I'm gonna cut it at the 10 inch mark. If you decide to hem it, you might wanna add a little bit more. The size you make it is entirely up to you. I just put a snip and I rip. 
And as far as fabric goes, I highly recommend flannel for several reasons. One, because it's absorbent, it's soft, and really, once you've ripped it, uh, you, you'll get a little bit of threading for a while, but that virtually subsides after the first few washings. So as I said, these ones I've been using for years, and this one's a newer one I just added in there out of a scrap, but like especially these ones, I've been using those for a long time, and they've lasted me forever, and same thing with these. So you can see, yeah, they kind of thread a little bit, but it's not a big deal. It really isn't and they're still gonna last for a very long time. Now from this point, the size you wanna make it, you know, you wanna pull off, there's definitely gonna be very loose threads from the ripping process. So you wanna pull those off, but then the size you make it after that is gonna be entirely up to you. I would go for about that length. Let's see how long that is approximately. That's probably about 20 inches. Yep, <laughs> that was 20 inches. So that's a good size, I think. You could probably go smaller and then I would just fold them up and then I would use it like like this. I don't know, now that I think about it, this is probably pretty big. You probably only need it to be about half that size. And probably a 10 inch by 10 inch square is gonna be plenty big enough. Cause really, let's see what, that, what happens when I cut that in half. See, that's gonna be plenty thick. And if you have to use a couple of them, use a couple of them. But I'll tell you something, when it comes to the cloth, typically you don't need more than one. And you could even choose to spray a little water or something on this, even a little colloidal silver because it's antibacterial and it's going to also help just keep you fresher. Uh, cloth cleans better than paper anyway. So you may only have to use one, but if you have to use two, well, no big deal. They're reusable, remember? So you're not having to worry about wasting it. So now then just keep these in some kind of basket or box or whatever you have this handy next to the toilet on the shelf on the window shelf next to the toilet or you can put it like this one here sits on the back of the other toilet and then what you put the dirty wipes in is going to be entirely up to you now for me because i've always just used these for just the number one job i don't need a very big receptacle and it's really just me using them in that case so I have, I went to garage sales and found some used things so I didn't have to pay very much for them. And one was this cute little crock that I keep in the bathroom that has more of the kind of country cabiny type theme to it. So that one sits down on the floor next to the toilet in that room and I just throw those in there. No, I don't put them in any kind of soaking solution. And then in the other bathroom, I, ha I found an old teapot. It's something that can kind of look cute. So this old rustic teapot that I found, that sits in the other bathroom. Now, if it came down to it and we had to start using the cloth for bigger jobs, then what I would do is I would switch to a coconut oil bucket because I, ha I always recycle these, I always keep these, and then I would just toss them in here. And again, though I considered a possible soaking solution, uh, it's really actually not recommended. It can actually make it worse. So it's better just to throw them in there. And then I would at that point then make sure I was washing them every day in, in a load by themselves. So, you know, all of the wipes together. Now, when you go to wash them, a few ideas would be to use maybe a, a little bit of bleach in there, uh, just to, to kill off any bacteria and germs. I would probably do like I usually do with any of my other clothes, and that is to use some homemade vinegar and my homemade laundry soap. You can choose to, if you have a washing machine that has a pre-soak on it, that might be a good option. Some people choose to do, to do a pre-rinse for, uh, for the dirtier ones. Uh, whether it be they rinse it with like a sprayer like you would for your diapers right into the toilet or uh, even in the washing machine itself, you can throw that in there, do a pre-rinse, and then do a soak, then do like a regular wash and a rinse. So whatever you think is going to be best, that's all going to be up to you. Some other things I recommend is maybe uh, if you're wanting to do the pre-soak, add some baking soda to it. That will help remove odors as well. And I would even consider the baking soda in the bucket with the wipes. Just to sprinkle a little bit in there, you know, just put a pinch in there every so often as you're, uh, it just depends on how long you're going to let it go. Uh, to keep the smell down uh, but again washing daily is going to be best and if you have a big family that's going to be easier for you to do because you're going to make 
a bigger load anyway. So there's just two of us here. I personally don't think we'll have to get to that point because again, we're well stocked on toilet paper and we also have other options. And because I always use these for urination, I save us a lot of toilet paper by doing that anyway. But we're getting into that time of the year that we've got a lot of herbs coming in that are also excellent for using as a toilet paper replacement and you don't have to worry about washing them one of those herbs is woolly lamb's ear at the moment that i'm shooting this video i still have a few woolly lamb's ear seeds left up on my store but not much and when those are gone i i can't restock those until next season until fall uh, but i do have a lot of marshmallow seed and marshmallow is another good option now here's the reason i planted years ago woolly lamb's ear and started growing it woolly lamb's ear has many uses it is edible though you wouldn't want to eat it fresh uh, it has a nice flavor. It makes a really good tea. It's got some medicinal benefits that are, that are really good. It is naturally antimicrobial. But the main reason I started growing it is because it makes a great uh, alternative bandage, which I've used many times because of the properties in it, because of the soft and absorbent qualities of the leaf itself but it is very soft. It actually feels like velvet. So because of that, you know, the nature, the soft kind of fuzzy nature of it, it's gonna be very good at cleaning. And because it's absorbent, it's rather thick. And also because of its natural antibacterial properties it has in it, it's, it's just gonna add that much more benefits. So ours is coming in. This is what it looks like right now. Thankfully, it's one of the first herbs that's coming in this year and it's doing quite well. Uh, woolly lamb's ear can take, it does spread quickly and it grows pretty fast. Um, I love it. It is a beautiful plant in the garden. And then the marshmallow is another one. It has wider leaves and they're also soft and a little bit fuzzy. So those are, they're not going to be as absorbent as the woolly lambs there, but they're still going to be nice and soft. And uh, again, totally biodegradable. You can just flush them down the toilet. And realistically, it is a good option. I mean, a lot of us are joking about it right now, but like I said, that is why I started growing the woolly lamb's ear was just in case, just to have a backup source in case for some reason uh, toilet paper was unaccessible and maybe even trying to keep them up on laundry was too hard. Of course, you have to realize when it comes to those herbs, they're only growing a certain time of the year and so they're not going to be there year round for you. So you're still going to need to have some kind of other fallback like the cloth. People did this for hundreds of years, okay? It's not something to be afraid of. Just like people did cloth diapers for hundreds and thousands of years, and people are doing cloth diapers today. People are doing cloth feminine napkins today. So, you know, this is just another thing that can just go right on in there. It doesn't really have to be that hard. You can just take your bucket, you can, you can just dump it into your washing machine, do your pre-rinse, pre-soak, whatever it is you wanna do, uh, again, for me, I would just stick with the vinegar and my homemade laundry soap because it already has the washing soda in it. But anything else you want to add to it, another option would be even spraying some colloidal silver into the bucket on top of the wipes that would help keep the smell and, you know, and kill off the bacteria. But I did do a little researching to see how other people do it. And it is, it is not actually recommended to soak them in the bucket to put it in a water solution. That's something you want to do in your washing machine. And then of course, if you're doing an off-grid setup, the idea would be the same. Okay. You would probably, you'd want to do a pre-soak and then a good rinse and then a good wash. Oh yes. And hot water, if you can, if you have hot water, ours isn't currently hooked up to hot water. Uh, ours only runs off cold. That's just the way we're set up. Obviously hot water is going to be recommended and hanging to dry in the sun if you have it. Because sunlight is really great for deodorizing, sanitizing, and removing any stains that you may have. Some people may actually prefer to make their cloth wipes out of just a white or a cream color fabric. So if they're gonna use bleach, they don't have to worry about it changing the color. But if you're in a pinch, you may just wanna grab whatever flannel you have on hand. I talk all the time in my garage sale videos about stocking up on flannel whenever we see flannel sheets at garage sales we buy them because here we can usually buy a whole sheet flannel no matter you know in pristine condition even for 50 cents to a dollar i've heard some places some people say that where they're at to buy flannel sheets even used one that's 25 dollars a set which 
I think that's ridiculous. But if you can get them for, well, even if you had to pay that much for them, uh, just think you'll be you reusing it again and again and again, and you wouldn't have to worry about running out of toilet paper. So, but if you already have some flannel sheets that maybe you don't use as much anymore or don't use at all, those would be the first things I would go with. It's going to save you money, and it's going to save you the at least the concern if you end up sequestered in your house and you can't get out to get toilet paper, or it's all out because you know, all the panic buying going on and people buying up toilet paper and not stocking up on food like they should be. So I, I just don't get the point. What's the point of stocking up on toilet paper if you don't have any food? Because you're not going to need the toilet paper if you don't have food. And if you have any suggestions, ideas, things that you do, maybe good uh, soaking solutions, do you, you know, maybe you're already doing this. Do you use peroxide? Do you use vinegar? Do you use bleach? Do you use rubbing alcohol? What is your process when it comes to washing your cloth wipes? I think we can all glean some good ideas that are going to work for our each individual needs, family size. You know, some other uh, pointers would be uh, tell, share with us how many people are in your family, how often do you have to do a load of your wipes, and, uh, and how many do you suggest that people have on hand? So anyway, share with us all that information so that uh, everybody can kind of glean something because this isn't just supposed to be about me talking about what I think is best. It's I'm just sharing with you what I do now and what I would do, but um, because I haven't gone to that next step of using it for the bigger job, I would still like to hear some pointers and read some pointers from everyone else as well. All right, well, I hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.